So what did I say going into this game in my live stream? People were talking about, oh, the Nuggets are about to blow out the Lakers after watching them last night. Now they're without LeBron. I said, they just need a good performance from Anthony Davis. They don't need him to be an MVP. They just need him to be good. And they got very good. They got a good, solid Anthony Davis game. Because people were talking about, like, what's wrong with the Lakers? Absolutely nothing's wrong with the Lakers. The Lakers completely overachieved when LeBron and Anthony Davis were out, keeping them in a nice playoff position. What's wrong with the Lakers is that Anthony Davis came back and has been absolutely trash. And then LeBron came back for two games and was absolutely trash and just was a horrible leader throwing his arms up at other players. And it, it, they just went, followed them and played horribly. And you like, maybe it's too harsh on, to put the game on two players, but you know what? We the two best players on the team. We're not gonna. No one ever talks about when y'all win the ring. What about other players? And like, oh, what does this ring do for Danny Green's legacy? No, people were giving him death threats, even though y'all were winning with him as your starter because he wasn't playing well. Even though y'all were winning, he was getting death threats. And no one's gonna talk about Caruso, KCP. He played great. What does this do for his legacy? No, they're gonna give this all. To, they're gonna talk about LeBron, and Anthony Davis. So when the when y'all go down. Even when, especially when y'all been winning without those guys and they come back and things go down and we're seeing that you're not playing very well, I'm going to blame y'all. But tonight shows how the Lakers are actually a good team. It's not just LeBron, Anthony Davis, and some guys. You saw it early. KCP didn't get many buckets tonight, but he was sprinting up and down the floor. He was getting in those lanes, made a couple deflections, made a, couple, a steal or two. Alex Caruso, you know, played pretty tough. Kuzma. His first half, Mike Michael Porter Jr. only made one shot, one of four. It was a little Kuzma. It was a little Wesley Matthews. They got a lot of options on the wing. Basically, everyone that was guarding him did a great job denying. And even Jokic, they were, he was kind of being forced to go on one-on-one because on one they were trying to swing it to MPJ. Heavy denial, just all right, we'll give it to Jokic and watch him go to work. And Jokic is the MVP. We could get into it in another video why exactly he's clearly the MVP. But Jokic being the MVP, you give him a one-on-one. -on -one, He's go if you gave him even just the time to go to work, even if you play great defense, he's going to get his numbers, and he finished with some very good numbers. But overall, Lakers did a great job on him too. Andre Drummond, who played pretty poorly tonight, they actually played some good possessions on him. But what maybe the unsung hero of this game, Marcus Saul, highest plus minus on the team, plus seventeen. Watching the game, just came in quickly, said, "Y'all got me messed up, man." They got, who was it, JaVale McGee in there? <laughs> I've got to I'll talk about this real quick now that I remember JaVale McGee. <laughs> Comes in there, he's just, he's, he's mad. You can tell he's mad. I still, if I probably was him, I'd probably be too. I was y'all starting center. We won a championship, and now y'all just kicking me to the curb. Now I'm coming in, I'm trying to give y'all these handles. I'm trying to hit a fadeaway, it's a fadeaway. And then we saw some Shaq Tina full movements, him dribbling off his foot out of bounds, him getting stuck by the rim. So some great movements from him, a nice pss, by spike out of bounds. It's some classic. It was just a classic JaVale McGee game. Him trying to go out at his absolute hardest and trying to make some do a little too much at times. But anyway, I digress. The point was, he hey, Marcus all came in there. He saw JaVale McGee sitting in the paint. And he just turned. You know who I am? I can shoot these open threes all day. Three or four from three. Very good defense on uh, Jokic. That call at the end was horrible where they called it a shooting foul where he fouled him clearly before he even took a dribble. That should have been on the floor for Marcus Gasol. But unsung hero of getting the team, game turned around after Andre Drummond had zero rebounds in like, what, 20 minutes, something like that. And it's just a pretty poor performance from Drummond. Not as horrible as the stats look. Drummond's a guy usually, he's not as good as the stats look tonight. I feel like it wasn't quite as bad as his stats looked. I feel like he played decent defense on Jokic, but it wasn't a good game from him tonight. I'm not a huge hater. I'm not a hater of Drummond at all, actually. A lot of people give him a lot of flack. I actually generally feel like he was the best player on the Lakers last night, which really isn't saying anything. But I thought he played well, and pretty much nobody else did. But basically, the takeaway from this game is that the Lakers... They're actually a greatly constructed team, top to bottom. Even the guys that get a lot of hate, Kuzma, y'all overhyped him at the beginning of his career, and now y'all y'all overhate him now. He's a solid defender. He did a good job on MT, MPJ. He can hit some shots. He shoots pretty well throughout the year. He didn't hit a bunch today. Town Horn Tucker gave y'all a nice spark off the bench. Sometimes he's young. Sometimes it looks bad, like that wild shot at the end. But hey, he got it back, laid it up for reverse. For the Nuggets. I can't get into the whole thing about the schedule this year and why it's so bad, but you're just seeing it happen here. You're seeing it with 
Well, Jamal Murray, who was uh, during like what a five, six games in eight day stretch or something crazy like that, tears his ACL. You've got Will Barton, who had to up his up his uh, usage after Jamal Murray went down, pulls his hamstring, and now you've got PJ Dozier look like a pulled groin. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. I didn't hear what they said. But regardless, it's all these guys going down to injury, and it's I wouldn't say the season's ruined, but. It's hurting actually what would be a great season with a lot of good storylines and interesting stuff happening. But it's worrying for the playoffs because everyone's actually like, oh, when they get healthy, when this team gets healthy, when this team gets healthy. Not to mention that Jamal Murray is absolutely not going to be healthy. Even these teams that have these guys that should be coming back with players that have been getting hurt all season. Teams have almost never been fully healthy. Why are we expecting that most teams will be fully healthy magically when playoff comes? I don't know, this schedule is just annoying to me, but that's all I got for today. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please, yes sir.